Today's programme, plants from around the world, the amazing work of leaves, plants give us food, they help us breathe, and trees make paper, don't waste it, all on Science Tube. Patrick has a great job. Every day he goes round the world with plants. First up, the jungle. It must be hot in here, and it needs to be for these plants. All plants need light to grow. So the windows in this heated glass house are huge. Tropical plants are used to living in hot, rainy places. So Patrick makes sure they're well watered. The steamy pipes keep them warm and wet. Even though they're different shapes and sizes, green plants have things in common. <laughs> Leaves, to catch sunlight and make food. Plants make their own food inside their leaves. Roots, to anchor the plant and take in water and minerals. Sometimes, in the tropics, roots hang around in the warm, wet air. Stems. It's a fight for survival, so whichever plant gets highest gets the most amount of sunlight. Fruit. At certain times of year, plants bear fruits some of which we can eat. Other plant parts have different uses. A bean from a coffee plant. And this is a cotton plant. These fibres end up as clothes, towels and sheets. It's time for Patrick to move away from the tropics and into the Mediterranean. It's a bit cooler here. But these plants still need water. And light to survive. Fruit grows very well in Mediterranean climates. Some plants have flowers which help them to reproduce, make other plants. Out of the Mediterranean and into the desert. Towards the end of the day, the desert can get quite chilly. And water's very scarce too. So these plants have spiky leaves and big stems to keep in as much water as they can. Their roots go deep down into the ground in search of water. Well, that's it. Patrick's been round the world and it's only tea time. And what has he collected? Something tropical and something Mediterranean. Ba -do -ba -dum. 
Leaves are food factories. Just by being out in sunlight, they make food. But they can't make food out of nothing. On the underside of the leaf are tiny holes that take in a gas. Leaves take in carbon dioxide to make food. Carbon dioxide is one of the gases that we breathe out. And they need water. Leaves collect energy from sunlight to do something very special with the water and the carbon dioxide. They photosynthesize. Let's get a lot, lot closer. It's very green in here because of something called chlorophyll. It traps the light's energy. Inside the leaf cells are tiny green chloroplasts. You can imagine these as food factories. The carbon dioxide and water react together to make a sugary food, glucose. And something else planet Earth needs, the gas, oxygen. Leaves give out oxygen, the gas we breathe in. And in the autumn, the green chlorophyll breaks down. And that's why leaves don't look green anymore. Leaves, factories to make food and oxygen, essential for our life on Earth. This is John, and this is his farm. It's organic. People eat lots of different plant parts from John's farm. John is only interested in one particular part of this plant. Not the roots, or the leaves, but the stem. A very tasty stem called a leek. Look familiar? Not everybody's favourite, the good old Brussels sprout. Sprouts are the reproductive part of the plant, the flower. They are very young flowers or buds. All ready to be somebody's Sunday lunch. Some plants need warmer, sheltered places to grow well on the farm, like this tunnel. This time, John's interested in the leaves. Salad leaves. They can be all different colours and shapes, and for a tasty salad, John is mixing several types together. Potatoes we eat are the part of the plant called a tuber. Tubers grow underneath the soil next to the roots. These have already been dug out of the ground. They are bagged up, ready for the supermarket. So, some roots leaves and stems. Parts of plants that we eat. Now all over this plant we can see bubbles forming. Now these bubbles are a gas that's been made by the plant and they gradually float up and collect in this plastic syringe at the top of the measuring cylinder. Now what we'd like to do is to test what kind of gas it is that's floated up from the plant. We're going to take this syringe off. I'm going to seal the end. Matt lights a wooden splint and blows it out until it's just glowing. Fantastic. Oh, that's so there's oxygen in the tube. 
So the gas the plant is producing is oxygen. We know this because the splint relights, showing that the plant has made oxygen. We use paper every day in lots of ways. But imagine what would happen if we ever ran out. And we could, because paper doesn't grow on trees. That's because it actually is trees. Trees for paper start their life as very small saplings. And grow and grow over many years into mature trees. of trees used to be done with an axe. But today, Guy can do it from the comfort of his cabin. The machine chops the trees down with its chainsaw. Then strips off all the branches. Finally, it cuts the trunk of the tree into smaller logs. Here's some we prepared earlier. This many tall trees will take years to grow again. At this forest, they make sure they plant a new tree for every one they chop down. But there is another way to make paper. This is a paper recycling factory and there's hardly a tree in sight. When we recycle paper, it ends up here. Paper waste is pushed onto this conveyor belt and dropped into a big vat. Add water and the machine stirs everything into a pulp. Pulping is done in a similar way when wood is made into paper. The pulp is sprayed along a moving mesh at a very high speed. A lot of the water falls out. This huge drying machine gets rid of the rest of the water, which is so hot it escapes into the air as steam. For the first time, it looks like a new sheet of paper. It's wound onto huge reels. All this saves all this. So next time you throw that piece of paper in the bin, make it a recycling bin and save a tree.